from the halls of Montezuma to the shores of Tripoli, let's look at the top eight fighting Marines. Mike Weaver served in the United States Marine Corps from 1968 to 1971, where he learned to box after being invited to the team by the USMC boxing coach who witnessed him knock out the all-Marine heavyweight champion after a scuffle over a jukebox. Weaver at the time didn't know he would become a world heavyweight champion. After turning professional and getting off to a less than stellar start, the light bulb turned on in Weaver's March 31st, 1980 WBA World Heavyweight title fight with John Tate. Weaver knocked out Tate in the 15th and final round to pick up the world title. After two solid title defenses against Gary Coetzee and Cowboy James Tillis, Weaver would lose his title via first round knockout on December 10th, 1982 to Michael Dokes. Drawing with Dokes in a rematch in his next fight, Weaver could not recapture the WBA title. In his final bid for a world title, Weaver would be stopped in eight rounds by Pinklin Thomas on June 15, 1985. Paddington, London, England-born Terry Downs served in the United States Marine Corps from 1954 to 1956, winning the All-Service Championship before returning home and turning professional in the sport of boxing in 1957. In only his third fight, Downs would be in with and lose to Hall of Fame Nigerian boxing great Dick Tiger. Not slowing down, and after picking up the British middleweight title, Downs would lose in his first bid at a world middleweight championship to fellow Marine Paul Pinder via seventh round TKO on January 14, 1961. Downs would right the ship on July 11, 1961, forcing Pinder to retire in his corner in the ninth round to pick up the world middleweight championship. Downs and Pinder would fight in a trilogy match on April 7, 1962, with Pinder regaining the world middleweight title in a 15-round unanimous decision. The Paddington Express would defeat Don Fulmer and the great Sugar Ray Robinson later in 1962. He would get one final world title shot in the final fight of his career, though in the light heavyweight division, on November 30th, 1964. Downs would be stopped in the 11th round by WBC and WBA World Light Heavyweight Champion Willie Pastrano. Paul Pender's name probably doesn't ring as many bells these days, but the U.S. Marine and former world middleweight champion played a significant role in boxing in the New England area during the 50s and 60s. While brittle hands forced him out of the Marine Corps in some boxing matches, Pender secured his claim to the world middleweight title on January 22, 1960, after defeating a fighter regarded as the greatest of all time by many historians, Sugar Ray Robinson. The two would rematch four months later with Pender again securing a decision win over the boxing great. He would settle any title disputes with successive wins over fellow Marines Terry Downs and Carmen Basilio in 1961. Downs would avenge the Pender loss later in 1961 to pick up the middleweight title, but drop it back to Pender in their trilogy match on April 7, 1962. This would be Pender's final match as the longtime Brookline fireman retired a year later. Dubbed the Black Hercules, Ken Norton looked the part and proved to be one of the great heavyweights of a rich era in the division. Norton enlisted into the United States Marine Corps after leaving school, serving from 1963 to 1967, serving as a manual Morse interceptor. He also picked up boxing during his time in service and became a military champion. Upon joining the pro ranks, Norton would compile a record of 29-1 before meeting the greatest of all time, Muhammad Ali, on March 31, 1973. Norton would become only the second man to defeat Ali, winning a 12-round decision, breaking Ali's jaw in the process. The two men would rematch that September with Ali winning the decision. Norton would follow that fight with a loss to George Foreman in a two-round slugfest on March 26, 1974 in Columbia. On September 28, 1976, Norton would lose a controversial split decision to Ali in their final meeting. Norton would be awarded the WBC World Heavyweight Championship shortly after picking up a victory over Jimmy Young in a World Heavyweight title eliminator on November 5, 1977. He would lose the title in June of 1978 in one of the great heavyweight fights of modern history against Larry Holmes. 
the son of an onion farmer from Canasota, New York, also home to the International Boxing Hall of Fame. Carmen Basilio turned professional in 1948 after serving time in the United States Marine Corps. Basilio's style mimicked his tough upbringing as he could withstand a wealth of punishment. This paid off in a major way on June 10, 1955, when he stopped Tony DeMarco in the 12th round to win the World Welterweight title. The two would rematch that November with Basilio winning in what was the Ring Magazine's 1955 Fight of the Year. Basilio would lose the title to Johnny Saxton on March 14, 1956, before regaining it by beating Saxton on September 12th in the Ring Magazine's 1956 Fight of the Year. Basilio's most impressive win came on September 23rd, 1957, when he moved up to defeat the great middleweight Sugar Ray Robinson in the Ring Magazine's 1957 Fight of the Year, picking up the World Middleweight Championship in the process. Basilio would lose to Robinson less than a year later on March 25th, 1958, and of course, the 1958 Ring Magazine Fight of the Year. Basilio's final fight and bid at a world middleweight title came on April 22, 1961, when he lost a unanimous decision to fellow Marine Paul Pinder. The Philly Phantom Tommy Loughran followed an outstanding boxing career with an enlistment into the United States Marine Corps in 1942 during World War II, where he served as a fitness instructor. In the years that preceded his military time, Lachlan became one of the greatest light heavyweights the sport of boxing has ever seen, racking up wins over a multitude of all-time greats. Lachlan won the New York State Athletic Commission World Light Heavyweight title on October 7, 1927, defeating rival Mike Mateague over 15 rounds. Lochran successfully defended the title and picked up the World Light Heavyweight title after defeating Mickey Walker on March 28, 1929. Lochran would move to heavyweight shortly after that, where he would have a solid run with the win over Max Baer before ultimately losing in his World Heavyweight title bid against Primo Canera on March 4, 1934. Barney Ross is one of the greatest welterweights in the history of boxing, but also served in the United States Marine Corps with B Company, 1st Battalion, 8th Marines from 1942 to 1944, achieving a rank of sergeant. Ross also received the Silver Star for his heroic actions in combat during World War II. Ross defeated Hall of Fame great Tony Canzanieri on June 23, 1933 to win the World Lightweight and Junior Welterweight Championships. A year later, on May 28, 1934, Ross would defeat another all-time great in Jimmy McLaren to pick up the World Welterweight title before dropping the Welterweight title to McLaren on September 17, 1934. Ross would again regain the Welterweight titles in a trilogy win over McLaren on May 28, 1935. Ross would hold on to the titles until the final fight of his career when he lost a unanimous decision to a fighter regarded as the greatest of all time by many, Homicide Henry Armstrong on May 31st, 1938. There's no greater representation of the fighting Marine than the fighting Marine himself, Gene Tunney. Tunney enlisted in the United States Marine Corps in 1919 during World War I, serving with the 11th Marine Regiment stationed in France. It was here that he became the U.S. Expeditionary Forces champion. After turning professional, Tunney would go on to have one of the greatest boxing careers in the history of the sport. Tunney's legacy was cemented with his September 23, 1926 World Heavyweight Championship victory over then reigning champion, the Manasseh Mahler Jack Dempsey. Tunney outboxed Dempsey over the 10-round contest, leaving no doubt as to his boxing prowess. They rematched on September 22, 1927, securing boxing's first ever $2 million gate in a fight known as the Long Count. Dempsey was more aggressive and determined in this fight while Tunney continued to box well. In the seventh round, Dempsey caught Tunney and dropped him with the multi-punch combination. Because a rule had been implemented requiring fighters to return to a neutral corner after scoring a knockdown. Four seconds passed as the referee tried to usher Dipsy into a neutral corner while he hovered over Tunney. When the referee regained control, he started to count at one and Tunney recovered. 
Once on his feet, Tunney used his footwork to stay away from Dipsy for the remainder of the 10-round contest, successfully defending his title with a points win. The only loss of Tunney's career came on May 23, 1922, in a loss to the Pittsburgh windmill Harry Greb in 1922's Fight of the Year. There are a number of other notable fighting Marines who didn't make the list, so be sure to check back in on 86 Boxing to catch us in the next video on the fighting Marines that are still out there. Thank you for watching.